In this video, we look at compilers and interpreters. As humans, we pick a programming languages and write source code. Source code is descriptive and easy for us to understand, read, maintain and debug. However, it's no good for machines. They need the source code converted into pure binary so they can understand and execute it. This pure binary form of our source code is referred to as machine code. The process of converting source code to machine code is known as translation. So in the previous video, we looked at low level languages and we said that low level languages are written in assembly code. So that's our source code. They're then translated using a specific assembler directly into binary machine code. With high level languages, the situation's a little more complex. So on the left, we have our source code, which can be written in any one of hundreds of different high level languages. One option is for this code to be translated via an interpreter. This is quite a simple route and we can see here it goes straight from the source code through the interpreter and then gets translated directly into machine code. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail later. The other option for high level languages is to have our source code translated via a compiler. Now this creates what's called uh, object code. A linker program can also pull in pre-written code from other external libraries and routines. At this point, we can produce either the finished binary machine code, or we can produce what's called an intermediate or halfway code, which can then be further interpreted into machine code. So here we're going to look at a compiler. So we notice here that our code will not run while we have a syntax error. So we've got an error here on line two and it's preventing our program from running. With a compiler, the entire source code has to be syntactically correct and has to be valid before the program will be run. This error therefore has to be corrected and indeed all errors in the source code would have to be corrected before we could successfully compile it and turn it into executable machine code. Now we're going to look at interpretation. Now this is exactly the same program as the one we just saw in Python, but this time it's written in an early high level language called BBC Basic. You can actually try this BBC Basic simulator for yourself using the web address shown on the screen. If we run it, lines 20 and 30 are both being translated and they're both being run. You can see it outputs the value of the counter here. It then tries to translate line 30, but there's a syntax error here. So the program fails at this point. If we correct the error on line 30 and run the program again, it executes without errors. The main difference to note here then is that a compiler needs to translate all of the source code in its entirety and it all needs to be correct before producing the executable machine code. But with an interpreter, we take one line of code, we translate it and we run it and then we move on to the next. On the screen now are the three different methods of translation we've been talking about. Using an assembler, a compiler and an interpreter. We provide a brief description and some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. That's everything you need to know for the exam. Pause the video and take some notes.